Hi there, check out this clip taken from my latest conversation with Deb Philman on the Engineering Politics Podcast number 41 titled Teachers Unions Exposed. You can get the full episode on my YouTube channel or even better yet by subscribing to my Locals community at engineeringpolitics.locals.com. And while you're on Locals joining all of these wonderful communities made by independent creators, make sure to join Deb's Locals community at thereasonwelearn.locals.com. All right, let's get to what you came for. Cue the music. Um, so also the NEA passed a resolution pledging, and they they put this on their website, uh, the agenda of, of this resolution. Uh, and then they think I think they took it off their website because I couldn't find it there anymore after all these publications uh, reported on what they said in this agenda. So this is what the agenda said. I'm going to share and publicize information already available on critical race theory and to provide an already created in-depth study that critiques empire, white supremacy, anti-blackness, anti-indigeneity, racism, patriarchy, cis-heteropatriarchy, capitalism capitalism, ableism, anthropocentrism. I think um, you were supposed to not be like judging humans better than animals, maybe. Yes. Yeah. So I had to research what that meant. And I'm like, (laughs) is this like, you know, I'm on team people and I don't, (laughs) I don't know why, like, uh, like, I don't, I don't know. Is this the way to make everyone vegan? I'm not sure. But, and all these other forms of Except bugs are okay. We can eat bugs. Well, at a certain point, you know, they're ugly. You gotta, so we can eat them, not the cute care of animals. Them. Right. It's not the cute ones. But but they consider all these forms of power and oppression that intersect, intersect in our society. Right. And you know, when you go through that list, you know, I, I hate white supremacy. I, I, I hate anti blackness. I hate racism. I, I when the patriarchy exists, I, I kind of hate that too, I guess how you define it. But I always cue in whenever in the list they just randomly throw capitalism. Which is something that is overtly like, good. Like thing it's you hate, inherent. Thing you hate, thing you hate capitalism. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Wait, why? It, it is inherent. Like none of these things are inherently good. Like in any way, most of them are actually bad, depending on how you define them. Capitalism is just inherently good. It's the reason we got here. The reason the NEA built a website is because of capitalism. Half these people are reading this on their iPhone and are like, "Yeah, take down that. You know, research that capitalism. It's it's been putting everyone down." And it's just mind blowing to me when they throw that in the list. Well, that's a little thing we call, you know, neuro linguistic programming. Yeah. So they, you know, they they don't do anything by accident. Everything they do is intentional. When I say they, of course, the people who are trying to manipulate you using words, um, and that, and the union's no different. Um, so everything they just listed there, as you said, is designed to trigger you on, you know, to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just maybe didn't notice that capitalism was thrown in. And it's, unless you're a person who already hates it, in which case you're happy. So, you know, it just, it's just a way to reach a wide swath of people. And then to have the people who want to say, but wait a second, I kind of like that capitalism thing. And then they say, They'll tell you that it's tied to all that other stuff you just said you hated. What's well, the intersection word? Right. And now that they're going to make you defend it as if defending it is defending all those other things because they, they put it in a list. It's on our list. Yeah, but it doesn't belong on our list, but it's on our list. Mm. So if you like it, that means you must like these other things because it's intersectional. Let's see. Oh, yeah. So it's all very clever gamesmanship. And, and, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people are falling for it. And, I'm realizing that more and more people um, than I ever thought possible are mostly motivated by what other people think of them. Mysterious other people, like Mm. other people they might not even like or respect or, you know, care about. But for some reason, other people thinking I'm a good person by somebody's definition. And it's really not new. I mean, what motivated every other, you know, like, let's say, panic or hysteria it, it's all the same thing human beings i guess are sort of hardwired to to do this and this is just i guess our turn you know for this generation but um it, it's it's very scary to me because kids are caught in the balance mm-hmm. and uh, you know i mean adult we're caught in the balance. i don't want to die <laughs> like i don't want people to come to my door and take my stuff and you know that kind of thing but at the same time it makes me angry because i feel like 
we were tasked, we, every subsequent generation from 1776 on, tasked with preserving liberty, and we failed. We just yeah. straight up failed. And when I think about how long people have seen this coming, um, it just, it makes me mad. It makes me really angry because I feel like I, I can't give to my kids what I believe is their birthright and their birthright is liberty. Yeah. Did you have a chance to watch uh, that interview with Jordan Peterson and Yeon Mi Park? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That yep. Well, one, if any of you watching this have not watched yeah, that, I, I dare do. you, I dare you to watch it and not like start sobbing at like eight different points. Mm -hmm. Um, because that that was amazing. Also, I think she has started a locals community. So oh really? You know, oh great. Yeah, yeah. I just joined it. Yeah, but today, it's so it, you today. know Columbia so. University is my grandfather's alma mater. My grandfather mm. went there, and well, not for college. He went for law school, but um, but still, I mean, I can't imagine surviving what she survived, and then to only to show up at Columbia and be like, yeah, I don't feel free anymore. So or to like finally, I mean, you talk about someone who grew up. You wouldn't, she wouldn't like, uh, she found freedom. Like, she found freedom by trying to just look for basic food. She didn't understand freedom. I mean, when you live, I mean, we kind of have the same problem in our society now that, that yeah. people who grow up in America don't know freedom either. They right. just want to give it away because they just see it as responsibility. Yeah. Where she, through all of this hardship, you know, finds freedom, uh, becomes successful, comes to the, the bastion of freedom that is America goes to an American institution which has always been held up, you know, in, in super high regard and then realizes, hey, these guys are trending in the direction of the people where I came from. Right. Like how disheartening does that have to be? Right. And, you know, these people trying to institutionalize this stuff uh, in, in even lower education because uh, uh, Randy Weigarten came out and her claim is that we don't teach CRT um, in, 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 in the younger classes because it is... Um, it's a legal theory, so we're not going to teach it in there. But, but the anti-racism is just a derivation of CRT. So they're teaching it in there for sure. 